Okay, let's see if this works. <clears throat> oh, it's getting it. It's getting it. All right. Let's move this bad boy over here. There we go. There we go. Um, I have no idea how this stream is going to go, like, at all. So, um... Right now, I just kind of want to see if uh, anything, anyone will show up. <clears throat> That's anything. I just want to see. Let's pop that out. And put like let's put chat like there. And just kind of shrink it. There we go. You've been, you've been relegated to the side of the screen. There we go. Oh, you know what I should do? I believe there's a chatty tag. There we go. Let's add that to the stream. Stream info, info updates is successfully. My bitrate is... Uh, terrible, I presume. <laughs> I don't... Yeah, nobody's watching. Um... Whatever, let's just start. Programming. Uh, da -da -da. You know, honestly, I don't know if the frickin' uh, contact stack is... I don't want necessary on here. Also, I think I might actually move you back over here. I'll just put, I'll just like you cover OBS with you. There we go. And, yeah. yeah. Save. But anyone that is, um, unaware, I have been working on my own programming language. Most people are probably unaware of this, to be honest. Um, I'm just talking and nobody's there. Kind of, oh, there is, oh, there is someone there. There, somebody has appeared. That is good to hear. It was good to see, I guess. Um, yeah, I've been working. I've been working on my own programming language. I just pull up like the README, <laughs> so hopefully this will give everybody a good idea of what's going on here. The the README. Um, right now I'm working on the parser. I've got a lexer for the language going and I'm I'm hoping everybody who is potentially watching knows what's going on if not uh, well I, I'm not good at explaining things <laughs> this is a lexer it uh, basically takes text and turns it into little bits of information I have this thing that like basically attaches takes a token and then attaches you know the text and also I, ho I hope everything is at least somewhat self-explanatory. Um, let me see here. So right now I'm trying to write a parser specifically. I'm writing a concrete syntax tree generator, which takes a stream of tokens and then basically just orders them into a tree. I, I honestly hope that is just like something that y'all can understand that doll kind of get. I don't really know what I'm doing, to be honest. I've never done this before. I've never made a programming language before. This is kind of, you know, attempt number one. And honestly, right now I'm thinking, do we need, do, is the context stack necessary at all? Do we need to keep track of context? I 
mean, in a way, I'm just gonna leave it there. So let's think for a bit. Um. I cannot think of anything to say. That's part of the reason why I just kind of have to chat up. Because hopefully y'all have something to say. I'm saying y'all. There's only one person watching. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to think here. We have our contact stack. If it's empty, then we're in the top level context for the file that we're currently trying to parse. And if we're not, then we're in some other... Uh, context and we need to read what is the top context to try and figure out what's going on Whew. yeah I really don't know what I'm doing here but I'm going to do my best so if we're in the top level context what is allowed in the top level context because I imagine let's see so functions we can make functions, we can make structs, we can make enums, we can make traits, we can make implement. Um, we can probably make, con we can make constants, maybe allow immutable variables to be declared at the top level, maybe uh, importing comments, decorators, allow those. So only certain things are allowed at the top level. So let me think. What I want to do is basically trying to think. Um, let talk zero equal tokens dot pop. Uh, unwrap we can totally do that here because we just verified like we're verifying that it's not empty so we should get something we know we should get something out of this because we have multiple verifications that uh, there is going to be some sort of token on the stack so what I want to do is I want to match talk zero dot inner. Let's get that inner. So the inner is the actual token because the like the tokens in the token frame are just wrapped are actually just wrapped, so they contain extra information. Um, let's see. There's literal operator keyword and error. Uh, token error. We're just going to say that's unreachable because if there were any errors, we wouldn't be here. So we're going to say that's un unreachable. Uh, token literal. We're going to have some stuff. Token operator. Token word. So trying to think here. Oh, it's not just word, it's keyword. Right. You can just hear my computer going. You can just hear the fans. Y'all can probably hear the fans. I need to get a new computer. <laughs> I cannot afford one. Um, so let's see. If it's a literal that we, if we're just at a, we, if we just have like a random literal, we're not going to know what to do with that. So, what we can do is ba basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to throw an error if this happens. Just like a, it'll be like an unexpected token error. So, doot, 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 doot. Errors.push. Error, new. It is not a warning. I'm trying to okay. I need to think for a second. Error, new. It takes 
a file as an option path, option path, option path. So we're going to do some p line. Ah, shit, we need to do a uh, line count, line count. Da -da -da. Let mute line, line number, or just elno equals zero. This is a u size. Type error. Type error my ass. There we go. Actually, okay, I actually need to check something. I need, We need to make sure that this is consistent. And over here in the lecture, we are using, you know, buffer reader new lines enumerate. Duh, okay, it starts. Yeah, it says I is the current index of the iteration. It doesn't say whether... Okay, it it start it does start at zero. So if we start at zero, it will be. My brain just took a shit. Uh, my brain. Uh, if we start at zero, it, that should be fine. So if we do some p some line number, span, 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 spin. Um. <laughs> Span, I believe, we could just grab that from the token wrapper. Token wrapper, token wrapper, token wrapper. So we could code some talk zero dot span. Does that work? Is, is it fine with me doing that? It, it, it appears to be fine with me doing that. I should probably... Let's see, and then I also have, yeah, I also have uh, some talk zero dot slice. Let me just borrow that. And then I should definitely, like, Just spread that out a bit. And then error kind interpret interpret error parse parse error unexpected token. That is the kind of error it is. And are you are you happy now? Are you happy now? You're happy now. Ain't that something? <laughs> so yeah, we just have a random literal value. We actually don't need that because we're just dis we're just dis just yelling out into the void. Uh, hey, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> um, let's see. Operator. 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 So we need to actually match O here. Match O, and there's a there's a shit ton of operators. So let me think. We've got a bunch of these guys right here. I think the main two ones I really I need to worry about deck. I need to worry about the uh, decorator comment. All right. So op decorator uh, da, 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 op comment op new line else uh we need, and then else we need two errors that push error new false some p some oh no some tot zero dot span some at tot zero dot slice and then error kind interpret interpret error Parse, parse error, unexpected token. Is this making sense to anybody at all? Is anybody still here? Yes, someone is still here. There we go. I need to I need to add the freaking uh, minimize button back to my freaking window decorators. <laughs> ah, da, da, da. So if it's anything other than these, then yep. If it's a new line, if it's a new line, then what we want to do is just All 
Oh no. Plus equals one. So we basically just want to increment the line number. And then also that should get rid of that warning there. And then if it's a comment, then we want to push onto the context stack. So context stack dot uh, push context comment line. And then this is context stack dot push context decorator line. Hmm. And so what do those do? So that's basically going to tell the cursor. I should keep this window up and maybe shrink OBS a bit over here on my second monitor. I can't shrink it anymore. Ain't that just fantastic? Uh, in that case, I'll just shrink Firefox over here. Twitch, you're going to be a little bit cramped for now. I'm going to get rid of the quick actions pane over there. What is that? And I cannot uh, create new layout. I'm just going to overwrite that layout. Thank you very much. So there, now I have... Um, so let me just close that. I'm just going to put you there, and I'm just going to put you there, so I have a view on who is viewing, which is something I want to know, because I want to know when people are here, and I want to know what they're saying, because when people chat, that gives me words <laughs> to work with. So, let me think here. Okay, I've got the context. I, th I think I think we need more contexts. So need more contexts. Might want a context for public um, uh, protected. Just add those to the end there. So keyword, we want to match that keyword. And figure out what that keyword is. Match W. Then there's there we'll just do this. There's that push error. New false some P some line number some top zero dot span some at top zero dot slice error kind interpret interpret error parse parse error unexpected token that's just going to be used a whole but oh i got two people two people watching now nice and so i'm just going to have that there's a catch-all and trying to think here trying to think here. Okay, we actually need to modify this a bit. First of all, I'm going to code. Whoa, that is not what I wanted, VS Code. That is not what I wanted. I just wanted it to freaking collapse that. There we go. There we go. Thank you, VS Code. Thank you for cooperating with me. Um, I'm actually going to put this into a code block because I think there's actually more stuff that I need to do here. Specifically, I need to actually create a I need to create a node and add it to the uh, concrete syntax tree. I think I'm trying to think of how to do this. Let's see. That's basically okay, so a decorator so decorators and comments, that's basically you have a symbol and it says hey anything on the rest of this line is part of the decorator or the uh, comment. And then, of course, like if you have a decorator and then you have a comment, 
then the comet overrides the, de the decorator, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I hope it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Um, so basically, once we get to these, what we want to do is we want to let mute decorator node equals a con concrete syntax node containing token is talk zero and LHS is none right hand side is some vec new Nice. And it doesn't like this. Use of partially moved value. Well, luckily I fixed that because I believe I derived clone. Just totally clone this bitch. I think. No, it doesn't like that. Okay, new plan. Top pop dot unwrap. Dot clone. Oh wait, no, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, talk dot clone dot data. There we go. Uh, you don't like that? Method, not a field. Use I am. That's what I'm doing. There we go. Bitch. Just you have to get it to work, I guess. Um. So we have our decorator node there. And we have our, over here we're going to let mute comment node equals concrete syntax node token is talk zero. Left hand side there is none. Right hand side is sum vec new. There we go, boys and girls, possibly. I don't know. I don't know who's watching. Can I, like, click that to see who's watching? No, I can't. That's, oh, uh, yeah, there we go. It, it just hides it. Um, I would like to know who's watching. I, I sadly can't. Oh, well. So what I think we then want to do, I think what we then want to do, actually, uh, oh, God, I can't think here. I'm trying to think here. What we could, actually, what we could probably do is just have, okay, I need to think here. What we could probably do, all right, we have our tree. We have a tree. What we could probably do what we could probably do we need the Modify the context stack. We need to modify the context stack so that the context stack contains. Okay, this is actually probably kind of brilliant here. So we need to modify it so that it contains tuples. We need to have it contain a tuple of the context and a concrete syntax tree node. Okay, I'm going to have to change some things, but. That's a start. That is a start. I just need to figure out how to, uh, I just need to change everything. Just need to change everything. I don't know why I decided to say it like that, but oh well. I'm just a freaking Autistic nerd. <laughs> You're a stereotypical autistic computer nerd. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Alright, so. If we're going to be changing the context stack so that it's a tuple of the context and a concrete 
syntax node. That means we need to go down here and we need to change these because they are now not holding the correct thing. So what we need to do is we need to do a that, 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 that. And of course, it's not the correct type still because <laughs> we need to create a concrete syntax node. Concrete syntax node. And I'm not going to go through the uh, trouble making a freaking constructor for the syntax nodes because it just doesn't seem worth it to me personally. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make take our concrete syntax node. We need, so token is going to be talk zero. Actually, since we're doing things like this, we don't need to call it talk zero. We can just call it talk for token. All right, token talk. And oh, we also need to go down here and uh, fix any and all references to talk, to talk zero and just change it to talk. And now we have to be very careful to uh, click the right thing. And we can collapse that as well. Because we don't need it, we don't need to see it. We know how it is. We know we know how it be. <laughs> so token is talk, and then left hand side is none, and then right hand side is some new vector. Token talk LHS none right hand side some vec new. Because, uh, yeah, that, that's how it's going to be. There we go. And then we can work on that later else. And sadly, we can't just go from else to a match block. We need to have these running curly brackets. Whatever. Match. Uh, let well, actually, wait. We can just totally change this real quick. We don't need to do the match. We we can move the the uh, that talk equal tokens dot pop dot unwrap. We can just move that out here into the loop scope. We know we'll have something because. We know it ain't empty. There you go. There's my comment. <laughs> so it's safe to unwrap here. That's basically all I'm trying to say. It's safe to unwrap because we know we're going to get something. We don't know what we're going to get, but we're going to get something. And so else, then we need to first figure out what context we're in. So we're going to match. Oh, there's three people here. Nice. Match. Da -da 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 -da. We're going to let mute current. Let's just do CTX for context. Is CTX stack dot pop. The pop it off the stack and unwrap it. And then at the end of everything, we're going to put it back on the. And then at the end of everything, if we're going to put the contacts back on the stack, if we don't have any reason to, like, complete the context, uh, or like, just like get be finished with the context. I hope that makes sense. But first, we we need to figure out what the context is. Uh, we need to match CTX at zero here. So we have a bunch of contexts, like a, what can only describe as a shit ton of contexts. Um, let 
Okay, seriously, we have a lot of contexts. So, uh, context function sig. We're just going to do that for now. Context function code. We have a lot of context. I'm just going. To, you know what, I'm just going to copy all this shit. Screw it. I'm just going to copy everything. I mean, hey, that's all programmers do, anyways. <laughs> Uh, that mean right whoa okay I need to just kind of indent all this shit Okay, now I just need to go in all of these and just add a that, and then that will get rid of some of the errors. And now it's just like, I'm sorry, what the hell? Uh, Okay, right, we need to go around and do context. Just occasionally looking back up to see if anybody's saying anything. <laughs> but nobody's really saying anything, so <laughs> I don't really have anything to respond to. Feels kind of depressing, not gonna lie. <laughs> so, let's see. Down here with W. Uh, you know what I need to do? I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you over here to make a new pane. God, that was laggy. <laughs> but we need this as a guide right there to know what kind of what kind of keywords can we be expecting here. We're at the top level. So the only thing I think here. Constant. Oh, I just lost two people. Great. Uh, word. Constant. CTX stack dot push. Context. Constant declaration. Concrete syntax node. Token. Talk. Uh, uh, uh. I just none. I just some vec new. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Like all of my neck. Ain't that something? Then I'm gonna do that. And then after a constant, I probably want to look at word function context stack dot push function signature concrete syntax node token talk left hand side none or hand side some vec new this is probably extremely boring gonna be honest I was hoping people would start chatting because then I'd have something to say and it probably wouldn't be as as boring. But whatever. Like the 
whole like live chat thing. That's probably like, like the basically the whole reason. Struct signature. Oh, for what's ru what's Rouge? It is a programming language that I am working on. I've been working on it. I started like three months ago, uh, just kind of on my own, and I decided that now that I have decent internet, I'm gonna just, like start trying to stream working on it. Also, uh, hello, Olala8. That is a nice username. <laughs> How has your day been, by the way? <laughs> Attacks node. Uh, I'm trying to trying to come up with the parser as well. Oh really? What do you what do you need a uh, parser for? Because SQL, ha. Uh, well, or well, subset of SQL, subset of SQL. So that'd be like I cannot think of I cannot think of a subset subset a, a subset of SQL off the top of my head. S sometimes my brain just does not cooperate with my mouth. <laughs> Um, trying to think here. So structure, and then after that, I have enums. Generation. Hex node. One thing I will say. Is that I have never like really? It's G DQL. I have never heard of DQL. Hold up, I did. That did not work. <laughs> I was trying to trying to make a new, new window. There we go. What is DQL? What is DQL? No, I do not want to go to DQL as a data query language. Here we are. Whoa. Man, I wish Wikipedia had a freaking dark thing. Oh my god. Is a is part of the base grouping of SQL sublanguages. These sublanguages are most mainly categorized for kind of data query, the definition, data control, data manipulation. Perform queries on the data within schema object. The purpose of DQL commands is to get the schema relation based on the query passed to it. That is interesting. So things like select statements. Okay. That seems extremely, that seems useful. That's essentially select only and it's related clauses. Okay, so basically you're just trying to make a parser for statements to get stuff from a database. That's, that's probably useful, I think. I don't know, I don't really work with databases that much. <laughs> um, it's related clauses. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that seems a very interesting project. That would probably, possibly be simpler than what I'm trying to do here, which is make a whole new freaking programming language. But that does still seem like a very interesting project. I will give it that. You probably wouldn't need... I'm trying to make something like database wrapper around a crawler or scraper. Okay, so the cra okay. So wait, is the crawl is it crawling around databases or is it put is it for putting the data in a database or actually wait, no, it's a it's data query language, so it's not putting data in the database. It's getting data out of the database. That's a parser for to query it. Okay. So like the crawler or scraper is crawling or scraping databases, I would assume, considering how specific you're, you are with the fact that you're only doing like the select command, basically. Just, uh, da, 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 da. It's like SQL for the scraper. All right. Yeah, that seems like a very interesting project. 
My nose just started leaking a bit. <clears throat> Plus, my head feels weird. Um, yeah, that seems like a very interesting and probably useful project. Granted, I don't have like all the information on what the project is, but that does seem very interesting at the very least. Something like select all div a ref from http example.com where div.inner equals content. Oh, okay, so you're scraping web pages, but you're using like an SQL like command to get certain content from the web. Okay, that that seems useful. That seems useful. That see that, that is very interesting as well. I honestly that wow that's hmm. huh. So you could probably do something. I'm going to open up a brand new. Um, I'm gonna open up a brand new window here real quick. A uh, new window. There we go. I'm gonna open up a new window. So I'm trying to think here. Um, I mainly program in Rust, so. Uh, da, 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 Change language with Rust. Make a f name. If you were to okay, so I think the first thing you would probably want to do for the parser is you need to take all the text and then split it up into meaningful chunks, right? So tokens, and then you take those tokens and he pass it into stuff that looks at those tokens and figures out what is all, what's all actually saying. That's basically the structure that I've been doing so far. That's like the basic structure for any sort of parsing situation. You make tokens and then you figure out what the tokens say. <laughs> that is the basics. Yeah. Ugh. I've been up for... I just my brain just completely just went off the rails for just like five seconds. Very easily distracted. I understand the ideas behind parsing. I've been reading Go the the Go compiler. I've never actually read the code for the Go compiler. Probably because I never really mess with Go that much. Okay, so I'm guessing you're writing this whole thing in Go. That is... I've never actually messed around with Go that much. I know that a lot of people see it as like a competitor for Rust, which Rust mainly targets like systems programming. I, don't, I think Go mainly targets like applications programming. Pretty well written, in my opinion. So wait, is this... Okay, so is that the link to your project? Let me see here. Is this like the project that you're working on? Package parser? Okay, so this is just a, a library that you're using to write it. Okay. Right, this is in the standard library. That makes more sense. I've never really messed around with Go, to be honest. I should probably look into that someday. Because I've like mainly been programming... Yeah, this is the Go parser. Yeah, I realized that really quickly after reading right here. Standard, it's in the standard library. Uh, um, yeah, so it's a larger language than is specifically printed by the Go spec. Okay, wait. So this is a parser for Go source files. It's not as the. It's this the standard library Go parser. Okay, I'm confused. I parse. Okay, so this is the parser used by the compiler, but it's listed. It's listed up here in this path. Can I zoom in here? It's listed up here in this path as part of the standard library. So that got me confused for a second. So even like label right here, a standard library. So that that confused me a bit. But yeah, I've never really messed around with uh, Go before. I should probably take a look at it uh, one of these days. By one of these days, I mean whenever I get a better computer. <laughs> I am going to... Okay.
Okay, I'm gonna look at the source file. Oh god, light theme, it burns! <laughs> oh no, come on, y'all gotta have freaking dark mode over here! Come on! I'm blind! There's no dark mode. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not sure if I do it in Go. You've just been looking at the Go parser for inspiration. Okay. I uh, I got you, I think. Possibly. <laughs> right now, I'm just kind of casually being blinded. <laughs> because there does not seem to be a way to do dark mode. Come on, y'all. Y'all know developers live in dark mode. Why? <laughs> Why must you do this? <laughs> I, I can't. I can't with this. Ugh. I, okay, I just realized up here, it's using Google as a TLD. It's using Google as a top-level domain right there. I Why don't you download the Chrome plugin? I'm not using Chrome. I'm using Firefox. Though Firefox probably has a Firefox extensions. Da, 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 da. Dark mode. Alright, so yeah, it does exist for Firefox. Add. Access data, blah, blah, blah. Allow to run in private windows so I don't get blinded. And now, let us attempt this again. Let's see, does that work? Yes! Uh, but now that's unreadable. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I think it broke Twitch. It broke Twitch. <laughs> okay, that that plugin might not work. That just completely broke tw the freaking Twitch dashboard that I'm using to, uh... <laughs> that just completely broke the Twitch, like... Okay, let me bring this over to, he to here and, like, show you what happens... Right, I click it, it's gone. <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> so, um, that might not work. <laughs> like, everything just breaks. Yeah, not yay. <laughs> Definitely not yay. But, uh, <laughs> I will have to take a look at that. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> it just completely breaks. Uh... Definitely need to look into that. So, yeah, <sighs> that was an interesting tangent. <laughs> Word implementation. You can exclude Twitch. Like, oh, there is a way to do. There's a way to do that. Let me, 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 let me see. Add-ons and themes. Preferences. Whoa! Uh, domains to exclude twitch.tv because it apparently just breaks everything. And I assume that's just gonna work? That's just, I assume? Uh... I assume doing that will just cause it to work. Let me see. Let's turn it to dark. No, it's uh, no, it's still not. I'll figure it out later. I'll figure out how to do it. I will figure out how to. Maybe I just have to spe specify dashboard.tv, twitch.tv, but I'll figure it out later. Context. Impl signature concrete syntax node. I, I feel like I should probably explain my reasoning behind how I'm doing some of this stuff. So basically, like, I've been looking at Kotlin for that project. I have heard good things about Kotlin. I have heard good things about Kotlin. I will give it that. I haven't, I haven't really messed around with anything like Java related in a while. I learned Java when I was in college because like, I tried college for like two years and they have 
Cassandra for some inspiration. I'm isn't Cassandra a database? I think Cassandra is a database. I I'm pretty sure it's a database. I've heard about it on like Fireship, which is a good channel, by the way. Um, so I'm just trying to think. Yeah, it is. Um, public protected. So those are the. Are there any other key like keywords that I should allow at top level? Definitely top level extern. I should add that as a context. Should add that as a context. Extern. I've been using Kotlin for Minecraft mods. I w I honest. I want to mess around with making Minecraft mods, but. I, uh, like, I, I have IntelliJ on my laptop, and I had a plugin for creating Minecraft mods. I wanted to, I have, like, some ideas for, like, Minecraft mods that I've been wanting to make. But <laughs> that plugin goes and tries to set up the project, and it just gets stuck on some, it's like, setting up something when I try to do, like, a combo forge and fabric, uh, like, mod it just kind of breaks and I'm just like okay I'm just gonna I don't have the energy for this it feels considerably better than Java in my opinion I get that from what I've seen it is definitely better considering Java there's the meme of Java being a boilerplate driven language and I mean looking at it I feel that <laughs> I feel that in my core um, I'll definitely need I'll need to look into I, I should make a list I should make a list of NVIM languages to look into .txt. Uh, so go, oh shit, go and Kotlin, and then I will just, I'll just edit that whenever more languages come up. I've been using the idea plugin for that. Yeah, I... Yeah, I tried to use it. It got it just kept hanging whenever I tried to set up a combination forge and fabric mod project. I have Rust on that list. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Rust is a very good language. It is mainly targeted at uh, systems programming. It has like it gives you low level control of memory to a degree while also trying to keep things as safe as possible. The way it does that is not very intuitive. It'll like it'll be like easy starting out, and then at some point it's gonna be like you're hitting a brick wall, and then it'll be you know easy to learn once you get past the brick wall. Uh, but I would say it's worth it. <laughs> I would definitely say it's worth it, <laughs> as someone who's currently programming in Rust. Um, implementation. I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. Um, Word. Public. Context stack dot push. I've been using C plus plus for slightly less than two years. I guess I will feel like Java versus Kotlin to to a degree. Uh, one th one thing I've heard from C about like C and C plus plus is that you have a lot of control. You have like manual memory management. But it's all, like very easy, especially in C++, to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> uh, Rust, basically, like if you start look trying to shoot yourself in the foot, the compiler bit will take the gun from you and be like, no, don't. <laughs> the compiler errors are also very helpful. Very friendly. It's like it's holding your hand. It's like, okay, I see what you're trying to do here, but here's why you probably shouldn't do it. Here's an alternative. Like, it, it, like, it, it like helps you learn the language, basically. Um, yeah, I will say that, like, undefined behavior, duh. <laughs> yeah, I think the I think the whole reason I started learning Rust was because I had a systems programming class, and we were writing in C, and we had this, I had this program that I was writing, we were doing, like, pair programming or something, 
and it just kept seg faulting. I even brought the teacher over, and we could not figure out for the life of us why it kept seg faulting. And I was just like, I am done with C. <laughs> I have I blue screened my PC so many times. <laughs> I, I feel that. I haven't touched Windows in years, but I feel that. <laughs> I, I feel that. <sighs> think here. Think, think, think. Where is the error? There is an error somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. Pattern extern not covered. What? Oh, I know where that error is. I know where it is now. I know where it is now. Context. Extern. <laughs> there we go. That should fix that. Yes, there you go. My brain is completely lost what I was trying to do. <laughs> Word protected. Stack up the push. Not public. Uh, protected. Concrete syntax node. Token talk. Right here. Left hand side none. Or hand side, some that new. Actually, I should probably change that a bit. It's where, like, the left hand side, right hand side, it could be either none or one thing or a bunch of things. I. I'm too lazy. <laughs> I am too lazy to uh, do that right now. I will, f I will fix it later if it becomes a problem. <laughs> uh, so, besides that. I want to deal with. Took me so long to realize that that it's VS Code. Yeah. Uh. That I, I yeah I am using VS Code. Wait, why did it take so long to realize that? I'm confused. <laughs> Actually, it's probably it's probably because I'm on Linux, maybe. Um. External content. The theme. Isn't this the default theme? I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused. Isn't this the default theme? <laughs> I've been confused. Window. Auto detect color scheme. I don't notice. The, I didn't notice the thing on the left for long. Ah, yeah, I just have it minimized so that the code takes up more space. Because I have the code, like, the font size big so it's more readable for, like, the people watching. If that makes any sense. Man, I've been almost streaming for about an hour. <laughs> Definitely not the default theme. Yeah, I think one day I, like, updated my system and... And then I went open to VS Code, and then suddenly all the parentheses were different colors, and I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, that just happened. I was like, I, okay, it's got to be some sort of change in... Definitely is the purple, blue, blue, green. Yeah. With a hint of orange. Yeah. I just, I just noticed that... Someday. What theme am I using? The, 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 the theme. The preferences. Color theme. I am currently using Monokai Dimmed. That is the theme I am using. I don't know if that theme is available on Windows, but... <laughs> Some back. New. That's just the theme I like. I guess. All the things, is the, they just don't have a left-hand side. Oh, well. Alright, so that's all of the top level contexts. I'm on Mac. Ah. 
I'm that guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, uh, you know, I just thought of this. A lot of programmers have Macs. Why is that? Like, why do a bunch of programmers have Macs? Is it just personal preference, or is it like a reason that a lot of programmers use Macs? If anybody has an answer, I would like to hear it. <laughs> so, like, if it is just like personal preference, then you know that's fine. Whatever, whatever work for works for you. I don't have the right to judge. Move to Ubuntu once. Moved away from gameplay and was recently bought a Mac. Okay. My brain just completely just farted again. Sometimes I just have a. I guess there is no better laptop than M1. Yeah, I, like Apple Silicon is really good. The like I think the main reason I don't have a Mac is like for like first of all I run Linux. And second of all, just Apple's whole holier than thou attitude about a lot of things. Like they make it a pain in the butt to like repair or upgrade your stuff, for example. And I just kind of don't like that. You know, if I buy something, I want to be able to do whatever I want with it. You know, no no babying. <laughs> but at, like Apple Silicon is really good. Like I like how they're basically trying to focus on performance per watt. Like, not, like, yeah, agree on that, yeah. I definitely just like the focus on performance per watt. <sighs> My brain just keeps deciding that I'm tired every now and then. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I need one, I need to add one more. Uh, use context. Stacked on push. Context. <clears throat> Been using Lenovo for quite some time. It fa it falls short on battery life so hard. Yeah. Uh, like pretty much all like mo like I know AMD has said they're starting to focus a bit more on performance per watt, but uh, like on the PC side of things, mo like the component manufacturers, they're just like. Who cares if we need to raise the power ceiling? Let's just pump, get as much power out of it, or like performance out of it. Ten hours versus thirty hours—that's insane. Thirty-hour battery life. So that's like what a. It's like what a day and a quarter, day and a half, day and a quarter, day and a quarter, day and a quarter. That is that is definitely insane compared to that's like triple battery life compared to ten hours. The, now I'm on a gaming laptop. I'm on like a Razer Blade Pro from like. I, I got this as a grad like a gift graduating from high school in like May of 2018 and this thing is loud and its battery life is like a few hours <laughs> at best at worst if I'm playing any sort of video games it's just dead in like a year charge it once in two days I wish I keep this thing on the charger all the time because like if I take it off the charger it's only gonna last a few hours Which, I mean, this thing is basically a desktop replacement anyways. I don't really take it anywhere, mainly because it's like $2,000. <laughs> Too expensive to risk. Just, I wish... I wish I could do that. I would love to get a laptop or just like any sort of computer that has like what it like what just this is probably just a freaking like pipe dream, but wouldn't it be awesome if you could get a computer with the per, like the CPU performance of like of like a Ryzen 9 5950X and like an RTX 3090 without NVIDIA's proprietary driver BS. Um, and just have that with like a really low, like you only need like a, let's say like a 300 watt power supply. That is definitely a pipe dream, but 
I would love it if you could get a computer that efficient. Which, Max, if you like take, if you take Apple's benchmarks at their word, the Macs do do that. But I would love to see something like that that's not a Mac. <laughs> and of course, that's also just you know taking, you know, manufacturer benchmarks at face value, not just going to reviewers and seeing if they're actually true. <laughs> I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> I am just rambling at this point. Uh, yeah, those are all of the contexts that we can do. Uh, yeah, my brain just completely farted as to where to go next. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to. I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with these two. They're going to be the simplest. So. What I want to do is I want to. For decorator line, I think what I, what I want to do is I want to basically pop a. T uh, oh wait, we already popped a token all the way up here. I want to check if the token is. Been looking at some other laptops, Dell new 16 by 10 Lenovo's, Microsoft, haha, -ha, but decided to stop at that M1. Yeah, I think sometimes because this, this computer is. From May of 2018, so I would make it four or five years old at this point, possibly older. And I honest, I'm honestly thinking it's about high time I get a new one. So let me think. It's 2022 right now, minus 2018. Yeah, it's like a, this is like a four-year-old laptop, and it's like getting at the point where it's, you know, I feel like I need a new one, but I can't afford a new one at the t at this time. Because, like, if I try to record or stream any sort of game, th like, at some point, the entire computer will just freeze and just become unresponsive if I try to do that. And it's annoying. Um, I don't really know where else to go with that. <laughs> with that conversation there. So... I think what I want to do is I want to take the decorator line, and I don't really care what it is unless it's a new line or a. I'm pretty sure Rust jobs pay pretty well. I don't know. I like I've been looking on like Indeed. I don't. I haven't seen any Rust related jobs on like on like Indeed or anything. I will have to. I don't have to look. Definitely, if I can get some like work from home, that'd be great, because I because driving gives me too much anxiety. That basically sworn off blockchain startups. Ah, oh my god, and stuff like the blockchain, like the like all the blockchain is is just a decentralized ledger. That's all a blockchain is. Are you American? Yes, <laughs> yes I am. I'm I'm in Louisiana. That's as specific as I am willing to go with the internet. You basically need a car to get anywhere, unless you're in a major city like New York, which I'm not. <sighs> yeah. Kind of six. But oh well, I don't live alone, so, you know, I have a ride <laughs> if I need to go anywhere. Doesn't matter what it is, but it pays well. Yeah. Just the main thing is I just need, a, like, a stable income. That's the main thing. I need to find a stable income so I can help pay the bills on this apartment and the electricity and the internet and save up and, like, help pay groceries and, like, save up for, you know, stuff in the future. That's something I need to do. I don't have, and I've just kind of been looking, but nothing's really popped out as something where I'd have a good chance at, like, actually getting the position.
I mean, I'm just trying to get my brain to start working a bit. <laughs> okay, so if we have a decorator line, then we need to basically see what the token is and if it's a like a hashtag indicating the start of a comment, or if it's a new line, then we end the context. I hope that makes sense. I really hope that makes sense. So what we need to do is we need to match top dot clone dot inner, and then I need to do token error is of course unreachable because we took care of those earlier. And then let's see if it's a little. Then if it's token literal, uh, then I need to do context dot one dot right hand side context dot one dot right hand side I'm trying to think that is, is that correct is that correct that would be correct yes where's my cursor there's my that's not my cursor there's my cursor <laughs> I might just stream for another hour and then get like no food or something because it's like five o'clock where I am as we want to get the the node, look at the right hand side. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna pull up the Rust documentation because I'm gonna need it. Also, luckily from this point on, there's dark mode. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 need to do. Is there a way to do option stuff? Need to modify. Da, 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 get or insert. Inserts value into the option if it is none and returns a mutable reference to the contained value. I think I'm probably just gonna end up because like I I know that it has a I'm gonna just do like unwrap dot I can't think push con concrete syntax node token talk LHS none right inside none does that work I think that works and then if it is a token operator O if let op comment equal O else if let actually not script let's just match O if we're doing it with the this doing it that way just is stupid um match O we want to know if it's op comment which we do one thing, or it's this op new line, in which we do another thing. And then if it's anything else, we do another thing. Which is ctx.1.righthandside.unwrap.push. 
concrete syntax node strikes back. Okay, there we go. You're working. You're working. All right, so doesn't matter what it is, but it pays well. All right, so if we have a comment. Uh, keyword not covered. Okay, I'll just handle that real quick. Keyword. Btx.1.rhsonwrap.push. Concrete syntax. No, actually, we could just make we could just make this shit simpler. Hold up. We could just replace this with. A single underscore. <laughs> so what we can do is we can I need to pull up this again. And let me think here. What are the what is, is, that, is there a way to get last mute last mute returns a mutable pointer to the last item in the slice mm, don't know why it's an uh, option but whatever Uh, I'll wait. No, I, now I wait. Yeah, because the list might be empty. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> um, 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 um. If context stack dot is empty here, then we just add this directly to the tree. Okay, I hope that makes sense. My brain is just not working right now. <sighs> so I'm trying to think here. So what we need to do is we need to go to tree dot children dot push. CTX dot one. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Expected. Okay. Okay, that works. Else, then we need to get whatever the last brain. Work with me here. Okay, so if else we need to get context stack dot last mute dot one dot Okay, actually, yeah, we need to do that different. Uh, let mute ctx2. Let's do ctx1. And then let's just leave that as ctx standard. I don't feel like refactoring everything. Ugh. Let mute ctx1 equal ctx stack dot pop dot unwrap. Because again, we know that there's something in there. And uh, da, 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 da. the brain is just assigned to not work. Make that just wonderful. I want to match ctx1 dot 
zero. Figure out what it is, which we're probably probably gonna push to the right hand side. Mm. <sighs> Trying to think, where would decorators be allowed? Just put a two do there. We'll figure it out later. We'll absolutely just figure it out later. And then context stack dot push. We want to push a new context, a context of comment line, and a concrete syntax node token token left hand side none. Right hand side, some rec, none new. And then we will just have to copy that. And then other than then do a line number plus equals one. Why is it not like oh I should do that. I was just saying we'll just put everything into this to do macro because I don't Currently, can't be. Yeah. So then we basically. Basically, need to do something similar for. Comment line. Match talk dot clone dot enter. Then. If it's anything other than token operator up new line ctx dot one dot rhs dot unwrap dot push concrete syntax node token talk rhs none none. All right, been looking at web drivers. Web drivers, web drivers. Playwright is, <laughs> ah, okay, so this is like, okay, it's like testing suite, okay. It is, it is sexy, I've never, I've never heard it described as sexy before. That is new. <laughs> I have heard, good, good, blah, blah, blah. have heard good things about it though. N never really, used it because I'm not much of a web developer but I have heard good things it is mainly used for like web development though and it, I think possibly I'm brain no worky <laughs> that's all I can say to that just uh, brain not wanting to work guess I'll use it there is also Cypress um those are mainly used for like, uh, like a like websites, uh, Selenium, Cypress, or Playwright. I, I, I don't think I don't think I've ever heard of Selenium. I have heard good things about Cypress and Playwright though. Selenium is the biggest one, is it? Hmm. Oh, well, I know all the and the oldest one. Okay, I I've heard about all that kind of stuff. But the main thing I know is that they're mainly used developing websites, and the slowest one. Ah, well, it is the biggest, so 
Makes sense. <laughs> I think, possibly. <sighs> yeah, I mean, just the main thing I've heard is that all those are used for making websites, which means I've never, like, into, like, testing, like, websites and stuff. There is no Cypress for Java or Go. Hmm. Only TypeScript. Yeah, it is. Yeah, those are all mainly used for developing websites and stuff, and like testing websites. So, yeah, that's all I can. Really, that's all I can really say to that. Just my yeah, my brain just doesn't really. I don't really do a lot of like web development stuff. I just know that those are mainly used in web development. So the decision is between Selenium and Playwright. Um, let me look up Playwright. Playwright. Uh, testing. It's like a testing suite. None of them are supported by Go. Yeah, Playwright it says it's mainly used for web apps. Let me. There we are. A playwright says it's mainly used for testing modern web apps. No trade-offs, no limits, full isolation, fast execution, powerful tooling. This is my company's open source projects. Uh, I'll have to use Chrome DevTools protocol with Go. So I'm trying to think. Yeah, this is mainly integrations, uh, supported languages. The Playwright API is available in multiple languages, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, Java, .NET. And then what is uh, Selenium testing? Selenium.dev. Oh my god, this website. What is this website? Oh my god. Okay. I'm not going to be able to read anything. <laughs> Browser automation project. Umbrella project for a range of tools and libraries that enable and support the automation of web browsers. So at the core is WebDriver. And you can do Java, Python, C Sharp, Ruby, JavaScript, and Kotlin. Okay, now I'm going to close that. <laughs> Now I can see chat again. Great. Yeah. I should probably talk to that developer. Yeah. yeah. See, so yeah, it seems Selenium na like natively supports Kotlin, which Playwright supports Java, and Kotlin is compatible with Java. It, they both run the JVM. Well, they both can both well. They both target the JVM. Kotlin can also target native and JavaScript. Uh, so you sh you should be able to use either for Kotlin. My hand is hurting, just randomly hurting. I have a carpal tunnel or something. I don't know if we can get that checked out. Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so we have decorator lines and stuff taken care of mostly. Now I'm certain I should go, haha, ha, pun intended, with Kotlin Java Mix and Playwright. <laughs> oh, okay. I was wondering where the pun was, but then, right, Go is the name of a programming language. <laughs> uh, I swear, when programming is involved, pretty much every word has been probably been used as the name of a programming language. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can be a pun, and you just will never know unless you know that that programming language exists. <laughs> ah, programming is something, ain't it? Programming. Do you know about Tari? Yes. So, I know it's basically a an alternative to Electron, where you have a backend written in Rust, and then you have these two libraries that basically form a very simple web view and it's an alternative to Electron and you have some sandboxing. It seems really cool. 
I should probably mess with it at some point. And I say some point as in uh, <laughs> I'm not a web developer, so <laughs> I don't really. I would probably be able to do good with the back end parts that are written in Rust, but in front end, nah. Nah. Ugh. It definitely does. It is supposed to be lighter and faster than Electron. Because, you know, instead of just, like, basing it off of Chromium, it has, like, that Rust back end. I'm gonna use that for the dashboard. So, like, that's gonna be the dashboard for the crawler. Got it. So, would the crawler be, like, like a service running in the background, and then you have that dashboard that just talks to it? If I get to that point. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's all I can really think to say. My brain... Sometimes when it comes to socializing, my brain is just mush. Alright. Uh, so use tree. I probably want to cover that next. Because importing packages is important. So use tree... And I'd like to have cloud service. So you have, so you'd have like the crawler. Okay, right, so you have the crawler slash scraper as like on like a server. So I can use the same front end for desktop web dashboard. Gotcha. Gotcha. And this would be like a service you'd like have one. Would this be like a public service? This, the more I hear about this project, sounds interesting. <laughs> the more, just the more I hear about it, this project, seems extremely interesting. Sounds like a plan, ha ha ha. Yeah, that that all sounds interesting. The main thing is just like. You know, like if you have, like since it's a scraper or crawler, the like you'd have to like respect robots.txt. Maybe have like a special user agent for it, if at all possible, so that websites can know that, like the hey, this is a crawler. Brain hurty. Uh, <laughs> it definitely would make sense to have like a unique user agent string for this crawler scraper thing and have it obey robots.txt just to be, you know, ethical about it. I hope that makes sense. It barely makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, this whole project of yours does sound extremely interesting. So this project is something like a normal database connected to a number of headless browsers. Gotcha. So the, okay, so doc so you have like Postgres and a Docker and connected to a bunch of uh, headless browsers and those would be like your work like worker threads. They probably have something that coordinates the worker threads and like has them put stuff into the database. My brain is just going everywhere. This sounds extremely interesting, though. That sounds extremely interesting. So I meant... I'm trying to think. I'm, like... I'm probably just going to ramble this entire stream. <laughs> Which I've probably been streaming for, like, an hour and 30 minutes. Now, I mean, Dockerized Postgres as an example... So that's like an example of a database that you would use. It could be Postgres, could be some other SQL database. Considering you're like probably gonna be putting like HTML, maybe like a document database like Mongo would work. Hmm. Hmm. If we ever get to this point, this should be an emoji. <laughs> It's just a containerized app, right. 
Just like any any database. Gotcha. Except you can only select from it. Okay. As an interesting restriction. So like the okay, like the end users can only select from it. My brain is just everywhere right now. <laughs> this whole project just does sound extremely interesting, though. Yeah, so the end users can only select from the database, but I'm guessing there would be no persistence. No persistence. It's an it's on end user how he saves it. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to get a better picture. I wish I had a whiteboard and a marker so I could try and draw out how I'm envisioning the architecture of this project. <laughs> Imagine you have the da like have like the dashboard, and there would be only cache to avoid refetches. Gotcha. So if it's just cash, maybe Redis? A simple key value in memory cache. Okay, so so Redis would be perfect for that. Redis would be perfect for that because that's, that's basically what Redis is. So, okay, you have the front end, you make a query, and then it's like something, I get. I guess that would be overkill. Redis would be overkill? Or would something else be overkill? But possible, I guess. So what I'm imagining is you have your like your front end, so it makes a request, the server like the the server parses that request, and then it basically checks to see if there's a cache for that request, and if there isn't a cache, like a cache like the cache misses, then it like deploys like one of those headless browser worker threads. I hope I'm getting this right. I've been thinking about something simple as hash map with eviction to hard drive. Hash, hash map with eviction to hard drive. Okay. Okay, I'm just stroking my barely existent goatee. I need to shave. <laughs> I need a haircut. I'm going off the wall. Uh, cache can be used for complex selects. Okay. Oh, uh, basically, just be you get a request, you parse it. You check the cache to see if the cache can serve the request. If the cache can't serve the request, then... Okay, so for example, if you want to select chicken and beef recipes, you would do... Something like... Uh, select all uh, Chicken and beef, or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know how SQL works. <laughs> but I think, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Hmm. Think I'm getting it. Hmm. Make one select from root, get link to chicken categories, then all links from that page to actual pages to recipes, and then parse them, same with beef ones. Okay. And cache could save you a refresh of the root page. 
Okay, I think I'm get. I think I'm getting it. I think I think I'm getting it. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Just think. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I just heard a thud. I'm currently wondering what, what that thud was, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like a very interesting and useful project. Could probably be like, probably like something where like you have like that and like, as there's no reason to refresh the page, you got in the same transaction. Okay, I'm okay. I'm getting a better. So wait, I'm guessing like every session would be counted as a transaction. Um, and then once, a, like, a session with the website or the service is closed, then everything just gets dumped and just in, just into the ether. It is gone. It is destroyed. That data no longer exists. Um, and every, I imagine every session would have its own cache. Only guessing. If transaction is applicable for that context. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, I'm totally... I think I've got it. I think I I think I'm understanding it. Would this whole thing also be accessible via like a do you have idea for a database name? Like a name for the service or the name of like okay. I'm I'm gonna assume it's that it's like a name for like the service. I'm thinking about W three D B World Wide Web Database. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it's very descriptive. That's is like basically it does describe what it is a it basically a way to get stuff off the web through like database syntax, and it's not taken yet. The only thing w three db dot dev problem loading page yeah not, not able to connect. The only thing that I could possibly see is they have like the, the W3C, which is like the World Wide Web Consortium at W3.org. So I don't know if they'll like take a problem with you using the W3 because they might like see that as like could be misconstrued as associated with them. That's the only concern I have, but it does it is definitely a good name as long as that doesn't end up being a problem. Uh, isn't W three just WWW? Yeah, just uh, it's just a, like. Yeah, I don't know. I was just I just thought of that because like I know that like you have like the the World Wide Web Consortium, which is often shortened to W three C, and the website is just wc.org. There's also W three School. I think that is a uh, W. I believe I opened a new tab there. W three Schools dot com. Yeah, you have this, but I think if we scroll down. Copyright by refines data. Okay, so that might not be a problem then. That might not end up being a problem. So, probably not end up being a problem then. But yeah, that is definitely a good. Is definitely a good name. W three db. W three db. It's only only four syllables. So it'll be very easy to say. Ugh. 
Wait, no, it's not. It's not four syllables. Double. U. Three D B. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six syllables then. Okay, my brain just completely just jumped off the rails and like, why is it double double U when it's a double V? But <laughs> I already know the answer to that. It's because back in the, back when the butter was invented, it could be double V or double U. They just called it W, and then it ended up being actually double V, and then we just continued calling it W because of historical context. <laughs> and uh, I'm just completely off the rail now. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I definitely say it's a good name. There's also other top-level domains. Yeah, I do think dot like dot dev. The only thing is like anything like like I try to get like for my personal website. I have a personal website. I originally wanted to get Ashton S N dot app, but it was really expensive, and they couldn't agree on whether or not it was taken. And also they said that hey, if you do this, you need to get like an like an like a TLS certificate, which I was going to do anyways. But that is a requirement. For dot and probably dot dev as well, anything tech related. I think, I don't know. W three db dot dev is very like descriptive. Although I think most people are just going to like reflexively dot com. Like most people, if they go, they want to go to like a website. They're just going to instinctively type .com usually. But you know, if it's like .com is taken, okay. What is it taken by? W3db.com. Oh, it's just a parking page. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a parking page. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that sounds good. I wonder, would it just be through like a dashboard? I'm guessing. I'm guessing there'd also be like an API to access it. I'm guessing. So what I want is I want to get in. Enter. And then if it's anything other than token keyword W. Yeah, just yeah, just like on spiffy or script that do. Never heard of either of those, but I get you. Uh, I think uh, token error reachable. Have to add that in there. Some key, some L line number, some talk dot span, some at talk dot slice. That's it. And then
There are quite a few unsolved design problems. Well, a good way to, to solve problems is to try and explain them and see if a random stranger on the internet can figure something out. <laughs> I'd like to have an option for static websites, something like a simple fetcher plus jQuery. jQuery? Is jQuery still a thing? These freaking error strings are just long of ways. If not jQuery, then anything else for XML searching, right? I just heard a thud again, a different thud. That would require me to make a generic wrapper for that static and normal headless browser agents. Okay. I need to remember I need to keep my head like a decent distance away from uh, like, from like the camera so that if I go to look at the freaking like monitor you not you don't just see the side of my head. <laughs> now according to yeah. Definitely see that. So can operator and I want that operator to be a very specific one. And I want op open square. And it also means I'd have to Dockerize that wrapper as a side card with a headless browser image. Okay. I have an option for stack websites, something like a simple fetch and query, if not jQuery, then anything else for XML searching that would require me to make a generic wrapper for the stack and normal headless browser agents, and that also means that I'd have to dockerize the that wrapper as a sidecar with a headless browser image. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sidecar. As a pattern, right. I, I get you, I get you. Um, I think. Uh, hmm. <sighs> that all thing doesn't sound like a decent solution. Yeah, that kind of sounds like a pain in the butt. I think like the... Hmm. 
another idea is to make that simple fetcher a part of the database. All right? So we use it if we don't have any headless browser connected. Right. That definitely seems like a like a better way to do things, maybe. Um, but then we lose feature with clusters and rotations. Clusters and rotations. I have no idea. I'm going to have to do a Google real quick. Clusters and rotations in fetcher, fetcher clusters and rotations. Uh, cluster versus fetcher. Yeah, I have no idea what to look for to try and figure out what that means. Um, so you, you basically got like two solutions that you know would probably work, but they have trade-offs. Okay. Clusters is to combine headless project into groups, right? Uh, but I'm guessing you can't cluster fetchers. And the rotations trying to think of rotations in this context. Something to avoid websites banning IP addresses. Okay, so you just like rotate out essentially a, a, v, a VNP, but I'm guessing you meant to say VPN typos happen. Yeah, VPN. So basically a virtual private network where you just change out the IP addresses so that it can't be uh, banned. Which, I don't know if you'd really need to, like, if you obey the robots.txt, then you probably wouldn't need to worry about IP banning. But, and the whole thing should have a single master. So you have, like, the master server slash database thing, and it just deals, it just deploys these fetchers and headless browsers whenever it needs to. Does I does that make sense? <laughs> the, like, am I am I interpreting things correctly here? Because I really don't know. <laughs> really don't. Know. <sighs> Yeah, and we have a simple fetcher combined with DB. Uh, then we lose all scalability. Hmm. I wonder what's like what would be stopping you from like clustering fetchers? And we would have to deploy the whole database even if we only want to only deploy another instance of the simple fetcher. Yeah, well, hmm. There's got, there's got to be a, there's got to be a better way. I'm trying to think. There's got to be a better way of doing all this. Just trying to think. I think the stream is just completely like changed at this point. <laughs> I think at this point it is now Ashton tries to help people with their programming. <laughs> Simple fetcher, memory footprint, something around ten megabytes. Either it's thundering or somebody just threw a trash can. Um Hammer fetcher memory phone. Something around one, 10 megabytes, where DB would be around a gigabyte if I go with Kotlin. Right. Okay. I'm trying to keep the like memory footprint small. I, I get that, I think. Yeah. I, like, what would be stopping you from, like, trying to, th trying to think, 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 trying to read up here? That would require me to make a generic wrapper for the static and normal headless browser agents. That also means I have to... Dockerize that wrapper as a sidecar with a headless browser image. 
what would hmm what would be stopping like that's a considerable difference ha ha yeah I mean like what's stopping you from like making the wrapper integrated like the database can like this like just has the wrapper and can just uh, I'm trying to think here Trying to think here. Okay, it's definitely thundering. And that implies lightninging. Which means um, potential for a power outage. Um, it's definitely thunder. Um, 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 I would definitely say that. Having the wrapper, um, uh, Rap, DB wrapper player agent plus headless browser, DB wrapper plus simple fetcher. I would definitely say that like having like the DB plus simple fetcher. Okay, that's both options. I would say like the first one definitely gives you more flexibility. Um, like the second one's simpler, but the first one gives you more flexibility. Hmm. And if I remember correctly, you said da 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 da. da. I have to dockerize that wrapper as a sidecar with a headless browser image. I would. Hmm. Would the would the wrapper have to be in the Docker image, or could the wrapper be integrated into the? No, it'd probably have to be part of the Docker image. Probably, I never really messed around with Docker, so. <laughs> but I would I would personally go with like the first one. It's much more complicated, but. It gives you more flexibility. That's the one I would personally go with, given. Yeah, that's the one I would go. That's the one I would go with. Just like from my my per, like personal, I would rather something give me more flexibility, even if it means it's going to be more complicated to implement. So So we need same interface to both normal and simple fetchers. So what would that interface be? I would, so I would imagine like that I like the main like master program it gets like the request and it determines like do we need a normal fetcher do we need a simple fetcher or would there be different syntax for the fetcher that you want to use um but either way it figures it out and then it would just like tell it spin up a docker image with which like the the the, 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 the docker image that we need and then like send a request through to the wrapper to uh, do whatever we need it to do um, what? Okay. What would the interface need to have? We would need to know what URL do we. If we wait for any element, headless browser needed. 
Okay, so if JavaScript's involved, we need a headless browser. If JavaScript's not involved, we do not need it. Okay. So basically, so the okay the interface you would need to pass along the URL that needs to be accessed. Then the database would have to determine whether it needs the database would probably have to keep track of like what websites have JavaScript on them, which most do. Interface something like a get page, get document, get DOM, select, get from selector. I misread that completely. I guess I go with proto buff. Proto buff. Proto, uh, proto buffer. Proto buffer. Um. So get page, get document, get from selector. Uh, gRPC, gRPC, general remote procedure call. I'm in way out of my element here. <laughs> Google, okay, Google RPC. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That's a big thing in Go. Right. Go Which means, yeah, Google is... A, <laughs> Google is... Go is a Google project. There we go. grpc.io. 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 I am just getting, like, wholly sidetracked here. Ahem. I want a new window. There we go. High performance, open source... Rest but binary. All right, so instead of transmitting everything through text, it gets transmitted as like a string of binary. Okay. To put it simple, right. Got you. I got you, I think. Also, dark mode. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely a good way to put to uh, go about it, I would say. And that would mainly be for like communicating with the uh, like the worker threads, the worker images. Because like the simple fetcher and the headless browser, those are like your worker threads. If I'm interpreting everything correctly, which I hope I am. And you'd use like the that to communicate between the worker threads if I'm getting this correctly. It's an awesome option as I'd have front in Kotlin, simple fetcher and go, normal fetcher in Kotlin or TypeScript, I don't know. And all of them communicate with gRPC. Right, yeah, so that that seems like a good way to go about it. Yeah. I, yeah, I figure that's what you meant when you said front. But yeah, I, I, I think that's a good way to go about it, I think. Let just totally simplify this here. I keep hearing like thunder or something in the background. And also it's like six o'clock. I am getting hungry. Um same time I want to keep streaming just so to hear more about this whole thing, whole like project. Um
is not the only one I want to care about. O match O op open square and that will make a new code of path tree collection. I don't know if it's worth doing database in Kotlin if we have a wrapper around the playwright plus browser thing. Ooh, I just burped. Honestly, like, hmm. I guess, like, what language you do the, uh, it could be database and simple fetcher and go and playwright in something else. Yeah, I'd like, I guess, like, the main thing depends on, like, how much performance you need, because, like, I think every language is slightly different in its performance, which, Modern computers are really fast, so it might not matter that much. But if you like need like absolute performance, then you know it all. It all really depends. That's all I can say on on that topic. Go and Java are almost the same except for memory footprint. Yeah. Yeah, I I get that. I get that. I don't want to go with Rust if that's what you're implying. <laughs> No, nah, that's just like the main thing. I didn't I was I didn't think about memory footprint at all. That should probably be more of a consideration. I would definitely say don't like Go with whatever language you want. It like like I think I I remember saying this earlier, but Rust when you're learning it, there is just kind of a brick wall, and maybe like a series of brick walls. It can be a very hard language to learn. Oh. How are you doing good currently doing something? I do hear thunder. Be right back. That's all right. I don't care much about CPU. That's fair enough. That is fair enough. Just want to just want to minimize the memory footprint. That that makes more sense. Uh, which one has the lower memory footprint? Though? Oh. Okay, you still got power. Yeah. Whoa. That. So. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. And 
and you are back. Right. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. If you don't care that much about CPU and you just want to minimize the memory footprint, then... Oh, oh my god. Text messages. Ugh. Let me put my phone if I can do not disturb next time I try this. Um, yeah, I can I can absolutely get that. If memory footprint is the main thing that you're worried about, I don't know which one has the lower memory footprint. What I need is fast I/O and good multi-threaded. Okay. And both Go and Kotlin are good with it. Yeah. Okay. Go is surely better with memory. Yeah. Which, yeah, because it's not... It's like, it's not running on the Java virtual machine. Uh, ten times... Thirty times for Hello World. <laughs> thirty times for... Thirty... Okay, 30 times better memory, like, smaller memory footprint for Hello World, I'm guessing? That's what you mean by that? Jesus! <laughs> That's all I can say to that. It's really... One megabyte. One megabyte. <laughs> that is... How how do you get a Hello World for? How do you get thirty megabytes Hello World? What the hell? <sighs> oh my god! Hey, the weather's supposed to get nasty. Are you good? Yes, I am good. Current, I'm good. Um, everybody, let me know if the power goes out or anything. Okay. The weather's getting bad, and, and everybody is texting. Oh my god. Just check in frequently. Okay. Are you doing good? Well, that's not binary size, but RAM. Okay. Still, how do you get 30 megabytes of RAM usage for a Hello World program? Like... I'm just getting all sorts of texts right now because everybody is just like, hey, the weather's shit. Are you good? That's JVM magic or something. <laughs> yeah. That's the main thing on like having a runtime is that you're going to use more memory because you have to allocate memory to that runtime. That is like the main downside, I would say. I've never seen a service written in Java that takes less than 800 megabytes. <laughs> or 500. I misread the 5 as an 8. I need to get new glasses or something, probably. <laughs> yeah. What? Haven't seen a thing written in Java that takes less than 500 megabytes. Yeah. Java. JVM can be crazy. <laughs> That's all I can really say to that. Just. I'm just hearing all sorts of noises. <sighs> I'm probably going to stream until either three hours. It says three hours on that thing right there, that timer up at the top of the Twitch dashboard, or until the power goes out, whichever one comes first. <sighs> Which one comes first? I don't know. Let me see. It's night for me, anyway. Yeah, for me, it is uh, 6 o'clock. <laughs> Going to sleep soon. But for me, it is 6 o'clock. It is just the middle of the afternoon, and it is starting to thunder. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely get good sleep, though. Um, 
2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty late. <laughs> Can't say I haven't been there before though. <laughs> Can't say I haven't been there though. Like, there are just sometimes I just have nights where I just cannot sleep because my brain is just bouncing off the freaking walls of the skull, just going haywire and thinking of everything, and I just cannot sleep. <sighs> Luckily, that's rare, though. But yeah, I def- I can def- I just- 2 a.m. I- I feel that. <laughs> Definitely feel that. Mm. I'm trying to think of how to go about this. Do you know about Deno? Yes, it's basically no. It's basically no JS, but rewritten in Rust. That. <laughs> That is legitimately, that is just my knowledge about Deno. It, oh my god. Okay. I need to start putting my phone on freaking do not disturb. <laughs> yeah. Been, u been using that for some time. Yeah. I should probably look into it, but I don't really do a lot of like web development, so. Not really much of a point, really. Mm. Think here. Oh, okay. Open square. That's going to make into collection init context under. Uh, an, an, an import tree context so it needs to allow identifiers and colons that sounded close potentially I'm starting to think I should probably just end the stream <laughs> That is noisy. Yeah, it's well. It is apparent. The weather is apparently getting really bad. So, uh, yeah, it's thunder. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I should probably stop the stream. I'm probably gonna try and like stop it at like a nice clean uh, two hours thirty minutes. Are there hurricanes? I mean, it's Louisiana. <laughs> I'm in Louisiana. This is Hurricane Central. But luckily, uh, luckily, I don't think we have a hurricane. Uh, I haven't heard anything about like a hurricane in or anything. Let me check the weather. Special weather statement. Okay, just a thunderstorm. I'm not in North America, sorry. Yeah, it is just it is just a strong thunderstorm. Not a hurricane. Yeah, it's alright. Um, yeah, luckily not a hurricane right now, just a thunderstorm. But where I am, we do get hurricanes. Sometimes. If luck is decided to be a butthole. Back in 2020, we had like two. Two hurricanes in a row. It's freaking crazy. Mm. I'm probably just gonna try and uh, somehow I don't have any drop frames. I mean, hey, that's good. <laughs> I'm just over here looking at OBS sometimes. They are roughly a few sec. All right. 
See you later. See you later as well. I hope you have an awesome, uh, awesome sleep. Seriously, get some good rest. I hope you have an awesome day, night, sleep, whatever. <laughs> And good luck with your project. It honestly sounds very interesting. <laughs> GitHub name is not taken as well. <laughs> nice. GitHub W3DB. Not taken. Alright, and so I'm guessing you just registered it. Nice. I'm definitely going to follow. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Alright. Now, I wish you good luck with your project, and I hope you get some good sleep. Some awesome sleep. Because it is... I didn't. I did that seven days ago or ten. Did that yeah. something like that? But yeah, I just followed it. So yeah, you like with your project. You get some good rest. Get some awesome rest. Thank you for the uh, follow. Yeah, you can follow like organizations and stuff and. Can you follow repos? Yes, uh, that's basically what like watching or watching repo is, just following it. You can also follow people. I can just hear my freaking computer's fan going. Alright, bye. You have an awesome sleep and good luck. And I'm probably gonna just quit the stream in a bit. Just cause I need food. <laughs> yeah. Peace out. I'm just gonna like, write a few lines of code and then just do. It's apparently working. I not it push it yet, so then context stack dot push. New one. Context collection in it. Concrete syntax node. So I can talk. Hand side. There is none. Or hand side. Sun back new.
Okay, I can't really. I'm, my brain's just off. I need food in my system. I'm probably just gonna stop the stream. Go to the camera. Can you adjust that a bit? And, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm honestly tired. I'm just gonna pick everything up and. Uh, I'm probably just gonna pick everything up another day. I can't really think of anything else to say. Uh, anybody who is left watching, y'all have an awesome day, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. I don't know your time zone. Um, and uh, yeah, y'all, y'all have an y'all have an awesome y'all y'all have an awesome life. There we go. If that works. <laughs> And uh yeah. I'm just gonna just gonna just gonna turn off the stream because I really can't think of anything any farther to go because I, I need I need I need food in my system. <laughs> Peace.